Okay, I'm Alexander Benavides, and my advisor, I'm a PhD student, and my advisor, Mark Fried, is also in the room, um, presenting uh, iterated local searches for minimizing the total completion time, permutation, and non-permutation flowshops. Okay, today we introduce the problem and why, what are the differences between permutation and non-permutation schedules. We present our heuristics and the computational results, analyze them, and conclude. Let's get started. <coughs> what is a flow shop scheduling problem? Well, in a flow shop scheduling problem, you have a set of jobs, like these two, and uh, that must be processed in a set of machines, like those three, with uh, a specific processing times, like those six times for the operations. And so we have to minimize, in this case, the total completion time, we refer to as CSUM, because it's the summatory of the completion times of all the jobs in the last machine. Uh, these two are examples, uh, are, the, are the two possible solutions for that uh, flow of scheduling problem. Uh, in the first one, the job one goes first, and the job two after it, and in the second one, the job two goes before the job one. Uh, these two are permutation schedules. Why? Because all the machines have the same permutation in each. Uh, uh, all the ma all the machines have the same job permutation in all the in all the machines. Okay. And what does a non-permutation schedule allows? Uh, for example, in this uh, schedule, we don't have the same permutation for our machines. The last one is inverted. And it allows us to reduce the total completion time. In this case, almost by 10%. So if non-permutation schedules are better, why the, the researchers are not using them? Uh, there are n factorial power to m non-permutation schedules compared to only n factorial permutation schedules. This is a very big difference in the search spaces. And that's the reason researchers prefer to focus on permutation schedules. <coughs> but we realized that not the whole uh, searching space is good. Uh, big changes in job processing orders on subsequent machines. Uh, for example, ex uh, inverting the order of 20 jobs in the next machine, it won't lead to a very good solution. Uh, so we focus on strategic small changes on processing order of subsequent machines. OK, now we present our heuristics. Our heuristics are, ba are based in an iterated local search. What is an iterated local se search? It iterates. Uh, it starts with a local minima, and it perturbs uh, the solution to try to escape the local minima, and after that, it applies a local search to try to find another local minima. Sometimes it is better and we accept it, but sometimes it's worse. And we use an acceptance criterion to allow a little worse uh, local minima uh, in order to diversify the search. Well, let's explain these three building blocks. The first one is the perturbation scheme. We uh, remove a uh, number of jobs and try to reinsert them. In this case, we are removing one job in the example. We take it out, it's missing, and we try to put it back in every possible position of the job schedule. Uh, as this is a permutation job, it, uh, it has only n possible positions to be reinserted. Um, now, the local search. If we talk ab about local search, we have to talk about the neighborhoods. These three are the most common neighborhoods for permutation schedules. Uh, swapping adjacent jobs, that means we have a permutation, we pick two jobs that are adjacent and try to swap them. In example, four and five, two and three, until we explore the whole neighborhood. Uh, swapping arbitrary pair of jobs. Uh, Besides swapping adjacent jobs, we can try, for example, three and five, two and six, until we explore the whole neighborhood also. In our implementation, the, this neighborhood is explored with increasing distance. That means that we explore first the adjacent jobs, 
After that, we exchange jobs of distance two. After that, jobs of distance three, until we reach the neighborhood. Ah, and sometimes, if we find an improvement in in some in some part, we reset the counter to distance one because uh, there is more probability of improvement uh, improvements with the, with the smaller distances. The last neighborhood is the shifting is shifting jobs. What is a shift? We get an, a job and try to put it in another place. We do it in a random order. First five, for example, later three, until we search the whole neighborhood. The first neighborhood is part of the other two. And the other two neighborhoods are complementary to each other. They explore different neighborhoods, but they are complementary to each other. So we decided to use both. Uh, ah, one last thing. We truncate the number of neighborhoods that we explore uh, around three neighborhood size. Uh, because in the earlier stages, uh, the local search will get lost uh, in bad local minima that are so expensive to, to, to escape from. And in the late uh, stages of the heuristic, it won't take three, three size uh, of the neighborhood. Um, to, to find a, a local minima. <coughs> so, uh, ah, one more note about the evaluation of the I schedules. Uh, to evaluate the I schedule, uh, um, a total completion time, we must know the total the completion time of each operation. That means we uh, and the completion time for each operation is the uh, completion time of the last operation in the machine, and in the uh, predecessing opera operation in the same job in the machine before, uh, plus the processing time. Yeah. This takes uh, to evaluate all the operations in the in the in the S schedule, but we only have to modif to update the modifying completion times. Uh, in the case we inserted a job in the middle, only from the middle and ahead and only from the critical path on. And those two speed ups allow us to, to evaluate about four times faster the, uh, an schedule, practically. Uh, the final BD block is the acceptance criterion. We use the Metropolis acceptance criterion that decides, uh, that accepts a solution if it's better with this one. And if it's worse, it has a decreasing um, an exponentially decreasing function for an increasing difference with the current uh, solution. And it's adjusted by this temperature, that is uh, parameter alpha, the average of the processing times, multiplied by n, because uh, the total completion times uh, is n, n, n times, n jobs, and divided by 10. OK. So with those building blocks, this is our algorithm, our implementation. You can see the perturbation scheme, the local search scheme that uses one of these two of the two searches, uh, local searches in each iteration, and the acceptance criterion. And how do we do this for the non-permutation schedules? Well, we use an iterated greedy. The first difference is that it does not have a local search. It iterates over a greedy construction or reconstruction perturbation scheme. And the other main difference is that these perturbation schemes uh, uh, won't only insert a job at a straight position, but with an anticipation and a delay. Let's explain this with a better example. In the earlier perturbation, we just put the job in a straight position, two. Now, we insert the position, the, the job, we have anticipation, for example, in machine three, positions two, two, one, one, and with a delay, positions two, two, three, three. This uh, focus on limited changes, as we wanted to, and the number of possible insertions goes from the number of jobs to the number of operations before we can put an anticipation or a delay. This means that inserting a job 
now needs a square of the number of operations, including the evaluation process. OK, now the results. First, uh, we use the standard benchmark of Taylor uh, that has instances as big as 500 jobs and 20 machines. Uh, we use uh, time limits of 30 no uh, by the number of jobs, per, uh, by the number of operations, and 60 by the number of operations in milliseconds that are standard time limits also. And for the non-permutation, we use 60 times the number of operations and 30 times the number of operations multiplied by one more m because the problem is now m times bigger for the number of machines. Why we don't use 30 and m here? Because the first phase of the iterated greedy is to use the iterated local search. So these first 30 are included in these other times. Our results are relative deviations from the best known solutions of Pan and Ries that are the, the, the state of the art. And our parameters were automatically calibrated by racing. What does racing do? We give them some ranges for our parameters and they, it will uh, create random uh, values statistically different it statistically will differentiate them to know which one are better and will give us back the best possible values for the parameter settings it found. So those are the ranges we give them and those are the values the racing give us back for the parameters alpha and D for the uh, perturbation scheme. Okay. We compare it against two state-of-the-art, uh, our permutation escadus, against two of the state-of-the-art uh, algorithms, heuristics. Uh, one is Pan and Ries and the other is Dong. Pan and Ries presented, uh, in his article, he compared it and is better than other 12 heuristics state-of-the-art by then. Uh, he presented an average of five replications. I present an uh, average of 10 replications. We use the same time limits. And uh, he gives the best known values we are comparing against. Their machine is 10 times 10% faster. So they have a little advantage. But even we, our algorithm is 0.3% better in the instances and uh, the corresponding times, we find 89, uh, we are better in 89 of 120 instances. And there are 31 instances where we are hitting the bottom. We are achieving the best known value pro and probably the best optimal, the, the optimal value. And we found six new upper bounds in the bigger instances. Against Dong. Uh, he compared it against two other heuristics that were uh, state of the art in, in his publish. And they give us the best of 10 replications. So this table is based on the best of our 10 replications. They have a slower machine, but they run enough time to be twice as our time in our hardware. So we compare it and we know that uh, our algorithm is better in half of the adjusted time for all the instances. OK, now we compare the quality of the non-permutation schedules we are producing against the permutation schedules we are producing that are already the better than the state of the art. We can see that these non-permutation schedules improve why is that simple there? Ah, it's too low. Improve even more. Uh, these negative values means that they are breaking the, the best possible permutation schedule, as we did in the first example. We, we, we are finding better schedules than the best known permutation schedule. And uh, we do it uh, in 49 of the instances, mainly in the, in the smallest ones. And OK, that's it. I think we need to run. The time is tight. And if we, te we, we taste, test, if we test with a larger time, 
to see the convergence of the algorithm, we can see that it still improves. But it doesn't uh, improve that much. Uh, let's remember, this 35% is about 3% better than the uh, Pang and Riz. So this minus 0.9% is about twice as better as this one. The non-permutation schedules are twice as better as the permutation schedules. And in the same time, and in a bigger time, they are not uh, improving that much. So it means that only uh, using the same time, only using half of the time to create non-permutation schedules, we can, we can improve it a lot more. We also wanted to know how does a non-permutation schedule uh, difficult in the plan something or, or study them. So we created a job reordering index that is based on Kendall Tau distance. Uh, it mainly counts how much uh, job inversions we have within the S schedule. And we know that 3% of the S schedules, in average, and 6% of the S schedules top are inverted within an S schedule. 3% time of the jobs. And at most, 6% of the jobs are inverted. And they are inverted mainly once in the S schedule. Some of them have two inversions. That means that, that they do a, a, a bigger scale. Uh, that means that a strategic operation reordering improves the total completion time in non-permutation closed shop S schedules. Uh, we also wanted to uh, study the buffer size. The buffer size is we have two machines. Sometimes the jobs finish in the first one, but the second one is still occupied, so they must wait. It happens also in permutation S schedules. And we wanted to know if in non-permutation S schedules uh, it, will be, it will need uh, a bigger buffer size, but according to our results, it doesn't depend on the permutation and non-permutation S schedules. So non-permutation S schedules might be implemented without technical changes, they don't need larger buffer sizes. OK, let's conclude. Uh, the main point of this presentation is to know that non-permutation schedules can be found within the same time permutation schedules are found. And uh, they are much better than the best possible non-permutation schedule, possibly the optimal. And a strategic operation reordering improves the total completion time in non-permutation flow show schedules. And those non-permutation flow show schedules can be implemented in the plant without any technological changes. Finally, these results were validated against permutation schedules that are better than the state-of-the-art methods for permutation schedules and in the same times. OK, thank you. This is my presentation and questions.